Welcome back everybody, this is the first of a two-part video, um, video 4A and 4B, this being 4A, for input devices um, as part of topic 3 hardware for the IGCSE computer science course from Cambridge. We're going to be focusing on digital cameras, 2D and 3D scanners, barcodes and QR code scanners as well. Okay, we're sort of into this bit here. Okay, well let's start off with digital cameras. Yes, they are an input device. Digital cameras, as you can see here, have essentially replaced the more traditional cameras you may still have in school that use film to capture the images. The film required developing and then printing before the photographer could see the results of their work. Digital cameras simply link to a computer via a USB port or by um, Bluetooth which enables wireless transfer. So if, um, for example, if a journalist takes a photograph at an event that's happening in another part of the world, they can simply send that image across the internet to, um, to a newsroom or a newspaper, and it's instant. Um, these cameras are controlled by an embedded system which can automatically carry out all existing tasks and much more. Okay, everything is digital, including your mobile phones. Mobile phones, of course, have, have um, many, many different options. The new iPhone has got all sorts of things, including a LiDAR scanner, which enables you to sort of capture 3D imagery. So how does it work? Well, we've got something inside a, a digital camera called a charge coupled device. And this converts light into electricity. We can see a picture of one here, a tiny little, tiny little device. And um, this is inside your phone or your mobile camera. It basically sees the image, it passes it through a lens, it's captured on the charge coupled device. We then use an ADC, which is an analog to digital converter to, co to convert this analog image into a digital representation, basically binary. Okay, we've also got timing devices, which enables us to change the shutter speed and delay the action and so on and so forth, as you would find in a normal camera. We move on to 2D and 3D scanners. Um, 2D scanners, these types of scanners are the most common form and they generally are used to input hard copy or paper documents. The image is converted into an electronic form which can be stored in a computer. Now you may have, well, I'm sure those people who've traveled abroad will have used these before with their passports. Okay, 2D scanners are used at the airport to read passports and also capture biometric data such as face recognition. They make use of a system called OCR, Optical Character Recognition. Um, and this enables the passport to be read and the text parts on the passport, things like the, um, the passport number and so on, um, can be changed into, into data, into information that can be read and can be stored. Um, in a database. It can also be checked against stored information in a database to see if it's correct. As you know, text is stored in ASCII format, usually. Here we go, here's an example. Um, the, the, the chap here walks up to um, a face recognition um, device and it scans his face and it measures different um, features of his face to see whether it is the same as the image that might be um, displayed on his passport. So we're using face recognition as you can see here. And how does this work? Well, I've got a photograph here of a, of a chap and you can see all the different features that are measured. So, for example, we're looking at the distance between the eyes, we're looking at the, the width of the nose, the shape of the cheekbones, the length of the jawline, and also the shape of the, high, the, shape of the eyebrows. But we do take into many, many different features. Now, 3D scanners um, work in a different way. They're used to capture 3D objects. You can see the chap here is capturing um, a 3D representation of a, um, of, a, of a human skull. So, they scan solid objects and produce a 3D three-dimensional image. Since solid objects have three coordinates, the X, Y, and Z, these scanners take images at several points along these three coordinates. The scanner image can be used in computer-aided design in CAD, or more recently, um, sent to a 3D printer to produce um, modeled work um, from that scanned image. Um, the use of 3D scanners is used a lot in hospitals, using a system called computed tomography, CT. 
Um, now CT scanners are used to create a 3D image of a solid object and they do this using um, by building up an image of a solid object through a series of thin slices. Each of these 2D slices makes up um, a representation of a 3D object. So each slice is built up by use of X-rays, um, radio frequencies or gamma imaging. Each slice is then stored as a digital image in the computer memory. We have three different examples here, the CT scanner used for X-rays, the MRI scanner, the magnetic re um, resonance imaging scanner use, um, uses radio frequencies, and the SPECT um, scanner, the spectrometer, um, uses single photon emission computer tomography. Basically, it uses gamma rays. We move on to another type of scanner, one I'm sure all of us have used, maybe not the actual scanner itself, but we've certainly used, we've certainly bought products which feature barcodes. This is a universal standard, um, and, if, and it generally appears on any product that's sold in supermarkets. So a barcode, well what is it? It's a series of dark and light parallel lines of varying thicknesses. The numbers 0 to 9 are each represented by a unique series of lines. Various barcode methods for representing these digits do exist. The example that um, the spec uses um, for computer science adopts different codes for digits appearing on the left and for digits appearing on the right of the barcode. Um, these are separated by something called guard bars. Yeah, guard bars on the left, the middle guard bar, and the right guard bar. So each digit in the barcode is represented by bars one to four blocks thick as shown. So for example, the number six here has got one white, one black, one white, and then four black. Okay. Note that there are different patterns for digits on the left-hand side and for digits on the right-hand side. Well, what, um, what does that mean? Well, as you can see here, the number five on this side, one white, two black, three whites, and black. Whereas and there's number zero here, two whites, a black and a white, and so on. Each digit is made up of um, black lines. The width representing each digit is the same. Basically in here, for this example, seven characters. The left side has an odd number of dark elements and always begins with a light bar. And on the right hand side, always begins with a dark bar. This is so um, it can be scanned in any direction. Well, what do we use to read a um, barcode? We use something called a barcode scanner. This is a handheld one here. We might find this in a library or in a, in a supermarket. The barcode is first read by the um, red laser or red LED light, the light emitting diode. Light is reflected back off the barcode. The dark areas reflect little or no light, which allows the bar to be read. The reflected light is read by sensors, photoelectric cells. As the laser or the LED light is scanned across the barcode, a pattern is generated which is converted into digital data. This allows the computer to understand the barcode. You might also find other input and output devices in a supermarket. Okay, first of all, you might find a, key a keypad. If the customer buys um, many of the same product, we can scan in one of them and then we can use a keypad to enter the number of um, enter the number of items that have been bought. Now, a screen on monitor can be used to show the cost of an item and other information to the customer. A speaker that makes a beeping sound every time the barcode has been used, every time a product passes the barcode, to announce that the basically the reader has, 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 has picked it up and understood it. A printer to print out receipts. Um, the card reader um, to read the customer's um, credit card or debit card. Also a touch screen where items can be selected using um, touch icons. You might also find this in the grocery section where you're buying fruit and vegetables and you need to weigh items and then input um, a number or, um, or, or um, a number of items, number of foods that you've bought. Now the advantages of the supermarket, of course, for using barcodes, it is much easier and faster to change prices on stock items. Um, it's much better and uh, more up-to-date sales information. Um, sales trends can be can be ascertained. There's no need to price every stock item, as I've just said on the shelf. It allows for automatic stock control. 
so if it's a low on a particular number of items then um, the warehouse can be contacted it is possible to check customer buying habits more easily by linking barcodes for example customer loyalty cards um, and that leads us on to the advantages to the customer faster checkout queues it's simply a matter of scanning each item rather than keying in prices um, charging errors overcharging or undercharging a customer is reduced as more it's more accurate the customer is given an itemized bill cost savings can be passed on to the customer as I've just said there's better track of sell by dates so food should be fresher which leads us on to QR codes this little Q QR code here um, links to YouTube where we're at now and it also links to the um, to the playlist for hardware for the topic hardware topic 3 so what is a QR code well it's a faster better holds more data more sophisticated solution than standard barcodes QR codes hold much more data than a standard barcode and QR codes have a much more rapid response time too when scanned with a QR code reader the QR code is decoded and its contents made accessible to the viewer in an instant um, that's probably why it's called a QR code um, it can store up to 4,296 characters or almost double that in terms of digits. It also allows internet addresses to be encoded within a QR code. Re it's represented using um, sort of black and white. But rather than lines from barcode, it uses um, black and white pixels. We have something called a framed QR code now, which basically means you can put some advertising in the middle of the barcode. Um, there are three large squares in the corner um, and these form the these are for the alignment the remaining small square is used to ensure that the correct size and correct angle of the camera shot when the QR code is read so it basically puts it, it orientates it the right way um, where is it used well modern smartphones and tablets allow internet access on the move therefore QR codes can be scanned anywhere and um, this allows for a number of uses advertising products giving automatic um, access to a website or contact telephone number it's also great for storing boarding passes electronically on your smartphones uh, for use in the airports and um, for accessing um, train tickets so how does it work so we point the phone camera at the QR code the app now processes the image converting the squares into readable data the browser software on the mobile phone automatically reads the data generated by the app it also decodes any web addresses contained in the QR code and sends us to the website automatically. Also, if the QR code contains a, a boarding pass, this is automatically sent to your phone or tablet. I must say there's a lot more advantages than disadvantages. Um, they can hold much more information than a barcode. There will be fewer errors. The higher capacity of QR codes allow the use of built-in error checking systems. QR codes are easy to read. They don't need expensive lasers or LEDs, um, like barcodes. They can be read by your smartphone. It is easy to transmit QR codes either as a text message or as an image. You can send them over by, via email. It's also possible to encrypt QR codes, which gives them greater protection than traditional barcodes. A disadvantage, more than one QR format is available. So, it, it's up to the device really whether it can read it or not and um, if it's not encrypted QR codes can be used to transmit malicious codes known as at tagging and generally um, because it's so easy to create a barcode anybody can do it um, it's relatively easy to, to write malicious code and embed this in a QR code when the code is scanned it is possible that the creator of the malicious code can gain access to everything on the user's phone example photographs address books stored passwords etc the user could also be sent to a fake website um, sort of phishing and farming or it is even possible for a virus to be downloaded that is it for this first video I've gone rather quickly um, the second video will cover the other input devices associated with this chapter please have a little look at that um, thank you very much indeed Please, if you haven't already, subscribe and hit the notification button and I will let you know as soon as the next video is out. Thank you very much indeed. See you next time. Bye for now.